Hello and welcome to episode 7 in our Shopkeeper NPC series. Previously we managed so we got the player to be able to purchase items from our Shopkeeper. And that will now show in our player's inventory. Now to get it so we can sell items though, that's going to be our next challenge. So let's make a start on accomplishing that. So what we're going to be doing is on our Shopkeeper UI, adding a button here to click on and tell it to go to the sell menu rather than the buy menu. So in our item grid, we have just a normal item grid which populates itself. What we're doing here is going to wrap this with a widget switcher. So right click and do wrap with widget switcher. We're then going to duplicate the item grid and name this one player inventory. So one's going to store the items from the shopkeeper and the other one's going to store the player's inventory. The widget switcher here is going to be the thing that controls what is seen on screen at once. So if it's zero in the active widget index, it's going to store the first one. And if it's one, it's going to store the player inventory instead. But by default, it starts at zero. What we need to do is make a button which toggles between the two. So let's create that button. So in here, I'm just going to create a new button. And we're going to make that button uh, go to here. Like so. And this button is going to change also its text based on what one we're seeing. So in there, we need some text. And we're going to change that to be black so we can actually see it. And it either say buy or sell. So if I change my button name over here to be called uh, mode switch button, that will now be something we can click on and do something with. So let's work out what mode we're currently in. So go to your graph and make a new variable. And this will be called current mode. And this will be an integer remember that widget switch will take a zero or one or any number really but we're only using two things so it'll be zero or one and by default it's to start at zero if it's starting at zero we can then tell it what text we want it to show in this button here so what we're doing here is going to on the construct at the start or at the finished here uh, let's do it at the start like so we're going to tell that button to update its text. Okay, so we need to make a new function for this to work. So go new function and go update mode. And update mode is going to change the scenery based on the mode that we've got currently selected. So on update mode, the first we're going to do is change the text on our button. So click on your text inside the button, name it, button uh, mode, there you go, mode button text and tick is variable compile that into a graph and you'll see it in your variable list now drag that out and choose set text now the value of the in text is going to change based on what this current mode is set to so from current mode drag this out and choose get and we're going to do a switch on int So switch on int basically will do, if we add, for example, if I had a pin here, let's add two, I have zero and one. So if current mode is zero, it'll do this. If it's one, it'll do this. If it's neither of those, it'll use the default. So let's do the zero first of all. So set text here, so you go to zero, and the index for this is going to be um, cell. And we're going to copy that over into the one, and make that say buy. We're then going to tell it to change that current mode value. So if current mode is on zero, we're going to set current mode to one. And if it is going through the ones on the switch, we're going to set the current mode to zero. Pretty simple. So let's compile that and have a look and see how that works. Let's go into event graph and at the start, we're going to call that update mode. 
and on the button so find your button in your variables list and do the on clicked event we're going to call that update mode function click compile so now if i push play and go into our shop we're just expecting this button to change its text which it does so next we're going to change what item grid it shows so if i go to my shopkeep ui again and go back to my graph and my update mode function in here we're going to change what widget switcher is showing so widget switcher drag that out which is get and you want to do set active index and simply just drag from this set the green pin over to your index and we're going to do exactly the same here at the bottom index into there so now the grid will switch out to an empty one afterwards so currently it's showing the wrong one we need to make sure it's showing the right one so let's go to shopkeeper UI and the reason why that is the case is because I was stupid and we want to change the set active index to be the opposite of what we see here so let's change um, uh, not change this we need to go into our start uh, of the event graph and rather than call the update mode we're just going to manually set this so let's go update mode and get um, this here plug that in and I'm going to tell active widget index here delete the set B equal to zero test that out and here you can see the buttons I click sell and it'll change it to the players inventory grid toggle back like so so that's all working fine so next we need to populate the grid with the players inventory so we can go into our shopkeeper UI and go to the graph so now we need to make the grid change its content so we're going to generate two grids so first thing we do is select the whole grid we've got here and select all the parts we need for that and we'll right click and create and collapse to function we get a new function appear like so, so this function is going to be called uh, generate shop grid and before we continue let's just test to make sure that's still working okay so it's good to keep testing things as you go and you can see it's worked just fine still so next job is to make it spawn in the players inventory so for that it can be mostly the same except we're going to change the fetch item or add another fetch item to it match what we've done on the other on the player inventory so on the player inventory we've done fetch item differently and we did this slightly differently over here too so we're going to select everything over here and copy that go to shopkeeper ui and we create a well we can just paste it here for starters and then we can connect that up to the index like so and just tell this thing you know So first thing we'll do is So first thing we'll do is I'm gonna copy over my new fetch item. So if I open this up, I'm gonna copy what I've got here. Copy and go to shopkeeper UI and add a new function and paste that here. So that new function is gonna be called fetch player item. And for that, we need to make it exactly the same here. So we need an index input. And that'd be an integer. 
and that will plug straight into your is valid index and then the get. Click compile. Then we go into back to player inventory UI and into the graph, we're going to copy everything we've got here, except for the fetch item because we're replacing it with a new one and put that into our event graph here. And the event graph here, we're going to actually just collapse all this like we did previously. So right click, collapse the function. And this new function, we can actually put in like so. Double click to open it. We need to give it that fetch player item. Connect up the pins like so. And our new function here needs to be named. Generate layer grid. And we need the input on that to be an integer called index. And I'll just plug into there, there, there. Let's make sure I've got that all selected up. That's fine. Compile. And so on the event graph, it's going to call the generate player grid and call this generate shop grid. Oh, we need to first of all set up the index here, like so. Compile. Um, okay, so we're done with that. We can close that and push play. So to test that out, we can go up to our NPC, buy a couple of things, sell back. It was blank when we go to back to sell because we haven't told it to update yet. If I exit shop and we turn back in, Ah, bug. So you see the little number in the corner? That's because I forgot a very crucial thing. And on our shopkeeper UI, when it generates the player grid, over here we're still using the item grid reference here from the old, the, well not the old, the other one. So there, just want to make sure that's using the player inventory instead. Click compile. So now, I push play, go up to our uh, shop, buy a couple of things, exit, go back into the shop, Go to sell, and you'll see the two items here I can sell. So let's get to update it once we hit the sell button. So when we do that, we go to our shopkeep UI, and when I click that button, find that event, so that'd be here when we say it's update mode. On update mode, we also want it to regenerate and, well, first of all, clear the player inventory and then regenerate it. So do player inventory, get, and we're going to do clear children and then we're going to drag in our generate player grid function and we need a loop again so I'm going to copy this for loop that we had here we'll just paste that in like so with an index hooked up like so so you're going to update the mode and after the updating mode it's going to clear that grid out and then it's going to repopulate that grid with a new player grid. So every time we click that button, it's going to switch and update the player grid. So I'll go close that, push play. So I buy a barrel, click sell. You see that barrel's now in that list. And I've got two. Buy a pumpkin, see pumpkin. And that's it for the player inventory showing up in the sell menu. Thanks very much for watching. We've got one thing left, and that is making it so we actually can sell these items to regain gold. Thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions or queries, leave a comment below. And if you want to watch that next episode right now, head over to patient.com forward slash Ryan Lely, where you can donate just $1 a month and get access to that video, plus many more and many more benefits as well. Thank you to all my patrons for supporting me and this series and the channel. Couldn't be doing this without you guys, so massive props to you guys. Thank you again. And that's it for me, so I'll see you in the next part, the final part in our Shopkeeper series. Bye-bye.